This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on the new features in Apple's media applications. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Recently, Apple updated Final Cut Pro to version 10.6, where one of the big new features is object tracking. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how this works and how it compares to the same feature in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's start with Premiere. And here's our clip. This video was shot by Terry Holland, and we're going to be using it today through all of our motion tracking. A couple bicycling through the Berkshires in Massachusetts, an absolutely spectacular summer day. Except, hmm, I need to blur the woman that's riding in the front bicycle. For some reason, I didn't have a release to shoot her or whatever, so I want to blur this. How do I do it? Well, first, I have to apply the effect. So we'll go to the effects panel, and we'll twirl down video effects. We'll go to blur and sharpen, and my favorite blur is a Gaussian blur. And we'll just drag that Gaussian blur and drop it on top of the clip. As is true with almost all of Premiere's effects, nothing happens because the default state of most effects are set to do nothing. So the first thing I want to do is to go to the effect control and scroll down till we see Gaussian blur. And we'll increase the blurriness to something really blurry like 50. Except I don't want the whole picture to be blurry. I just want a piece of it. So I'm going to create a shape mask. We'll click the circle and take the shape mask and define it so it just goes over the lead bicyclist. And we'll make this a little bit smaller. And you're going to see that this concept is almost exactly the same inside Final Cut. You want to keep the mask pretty much on her. But now how do we track it? Well, that's what these arrow keys do. When we click the right arrow, Premiere will now go through and track this. Now, I'm running this demo on a 2017 iMac. It's not modern technology by any means. So this tends to be a little bit slower than it would be if I were tracking on a more modern system. And in fact, I've already ordered one of the new MacBook Pros, which should arrive hopefully toward the end of next week. And if it does show up, I'm hoping to use it very soon on a, a new seminar, a new webinar, taking a look at what the Apple Silicon allows us to do. But for right now, we're sort of stuck in a slow lane. <laughs> I never thought this computer was that slow, but motion tracking does take a lot of computational power. So we'll let this finish and then take a look at it. Anytime this week. That's okay. People are watching. Don't feel guilty. <laughs> and we're done. Now, I'm going to hit the home key to go back. If I play this, she'll be blurry. But instead, I'm going to press the right arrow key and just hold it down. I want you to look at several things. Look at the smoothness of the track. Look at how the track the size of the effect changes as she increases in frame. And look at her framing within the track. So here we go, holding the right arrow key down. First, we select the timeline and right arrow. Now we're playing this a little bit slower than real time. But notice the, the space is expanding. It still has all the bicycle. The shadows from the tower did not distract it. It did not jump to the other bicyclist. She remains out of focus. And the car going by did not change the stability of the track at all. And even changing the angle of the camera, the track remained perfectly on her. This time I'll hit play. And we can see that she is out of focus, just as we expect. So that's what Premiere has been able to do for many years. Let's see now what Final Cut does so here's the clip that we're going to use. We're going to blur the same woman that we just blurred in Premiere, but how do we apply the effect to only a portion of the track? In the past, we would go to the effects browser and we'd grab the effect and drag it onto the clip. That blurs the entire clip. Instead, whenever we want to do object tracking, we must first drag into the viewer. And notice it creates a rectangle which says, what do you want to track? I'm going to drag it on top of the woman and let go. Now I have applied what's called this tracker, which will follow the woman just as it did in Premiere. It'll follow the woman. We'll make this a little bit of a rounded rectangle. 
here like that. And we have several options for tracking. You'll notice that my playhead is at the very beginning of the clip in the timeline. If I'm at the beginning of the clip, click Analyze, and it will analyze the clip from the beginning to the end. If my playhead is in the middle of a clip, clicking the right pointing arrow will analyze from where my playhead is to the end of the clip, and clicking the left pointing arrow will analyze from where my playhead is to the beginning of the clip. This is useful if, for instance, the starting point starts off camera, and you can't pick up the track because there's nothing to pick up. These two buttons are new. This allows me to adjust the shape that I am tracking, and the angle of the shape will run it a little bit off center here like this. And feathering, we're used to that already. This allows me to adjust the tracker. And notice that because they're linked, changes that I make to the shape affect the tracker, and changes I make to the tracker affect the shape. So we'll just open that up a bit. What I'm trying to do is not get the guy behind. If I click Analyze, we're going to analyze the whole clip. Let's watch what happens when I click Analyze. Go. Green indicates it has, whoops, stop. Green indicates it has a solid lock, and red indicates that it's having trouble finding the shape. So already we're seeing that Final Cut has problems in a way that Premiere does not in terms of creating the track. Let's try it again. I just made that smaller, and now we'll go back to the tracker and click Analyze. Up, oh, it shifted back again, so we're going to stop again. This morning at 9, it analyzed. Now, it still shifted to the back guy. Okay, so I'm going to give up on this and just do the back guy because I want to show how get some sort of track done, so we'll click Analyze. Notice already how much movement there is inside the track. And notice how it's expanding in ways that we don't expect, nor that's necessary, because it's getting confused to what the object is that it's tracking. Okay, so now I'm going to use the right arrow key and play this. And notice the difference in stability between Premiere and Final Cut. We've lost the framing. And now I'll play it with the effect, and we'll watch this say that we're done. There's our blurred shape, and we'll just play it and watch the blur. Clearly, it's not as good as what's inside Premiere. Better than it was before, because Final Cut didn't have this before but it's not perfect. We can, in fact, change the analysis method. Now, notice that I now have two trackers down here. This is the one for the girl. I'm going to double-click the name and rename it. We're going to call it Girl on Bike, and we're going to rename this by double-clicking it, call it Guy on Bike. We can see that I can change the tracking. Let's try Combined, and let's try Tracking one more time. The jitter is still there. The growing size is still there. And just as a comparison, let me show you what happens when we switch over to machine learning and we track it. Much faster. But still jittery and we lose control of the size. 
But that's how, that's how we can apply, say, a blur to a person's face or blur an object by selecting something that's trackable with a lot of contrast because it needs good contrast. Remember to drag the effect into the viewer, not into the timeline. Well, let's follow the same concept. Let me get rid of these two tracks. I'm going to click over here and say delete the tracker and delete this tracker. We're going to start again. And this time I'm going to put a logo in. Now, it's, this is our logo. <laughs> so I'm going to stay with the logo. Let's click to here, grab the aqua ball and drag it in. We're going to put it over his head because that's where logos go. Select the ball by clicking on transform. And we're going to scale this. Hold the shift key down to keep it in uh, aspect ratio. And we're going to go back to tracker, put the tracker on the guy down below, make it just a bit smaller, and let's see what happens. So this time I took an object from the browser, dragged it into the viewer, and now when we click Analyze, we'll track this. The Gaussian blur is still in the center of the frame because although I got rid of the tracker, I did not get rid of the blur. So I'll get rid of that when, uh, before I play this back. The tracker is analyzing the source media. It's not analyzing the media that you've put into the timeline. Okay, so now we'll select our background clip. We'll get rid of the Gaussian blur. And now we'll play this back and see how good it looks. First, we have to make our object go the entire distance. And so now we have a logo perched near the person that it's following. But kind of unstable. Notice A lot of bouncing around. The shadows caused a problem. The car caused a problem. First, Premiere doesn't track separate objects. To track a separate object, you've got to move to After Effects. Premiere will only track an effect that's applied to the clip. So I can't do this kind of effect in Premiere at all. Can in After Effects. But we have the same instability that we saw before in that the track bounces around a lot. This was an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar covering the new features in Apple's media applications. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 323. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.